Hey, hey, it's your boy, E Hood. Hey, hey, what's going on? Yeah, I got some good stuff for us today. And I want to speak on, um, hey, that star, bless you, woman of God. Hey, oh, and I got some good news for us Wednesday night, too. Be there. Listen, today I want to speak on the way the world should see the body of Christ. <laughs> Man. <laughs> hey, bless you, Dana. Get some more people to join in because this is going to be a good one here. It's going to be a good one. And, <laughs> and I am going to speak on the way the world should see the body of Christ. I miss you too, woman of God. <laughs> Hey, stop that cussing on my uh on, on my on my periscope there. I don't know who you are. Stop that. <clears throat> and and listen here. I'm finna speak on uh the way the world should see today's church. Watch this here. And I'm gonna be coming from from the um uh, scenery of where Solomon and Bathsheba, um, uh, Solomon and the uh, Queen of Sheba, uh, Sheba had came into contact with each other. And this was a powerful scenery that was really off the charts. And what it really displayed to me was the way that the world should see the, the uh, body of Christ and how... And, and how the world is supposed to be impacted by us. Watch this here. Because you know, because you know the way that the world see the body of Christ now, there's no respect. There's disrespect all around. I mean, I mean, folks say anything they want to say about the body of Christ. They say all things they say all kind of stuff about the church, all kind of stuff. And really, it's because of the way that we are behaving. So, really, they disrespect the church because we disrespect the church. So, we can only expect people to treat us and respect us the way we do ourselves. And I'm speaking about the body of Christ as a whole. So, this is why we got to get saved for real and grow up. Watch this here over in 2 Chronicles chapter 9. And this is the event where the Queen of Sheba came and she was pursuing Solomon as far as his wisdom and stuff. Watch this here. When the and, and I'm reading from the Amplified. When the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions accompanied by very many attendants and camels bearing spices, much gold, and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she talked with him of all that was on her mind. And Solomon answered her all her questions. There was nothing hidden from him which he was unable to make clear to her. See, the world comes to... See, the world have many questions that they have about life. And they come to church for answers. And sad to say, in most cases, they get no answers. No answers. Sad to say, in most cases, they get no answers. And it's really because we as a body of Christ don't have answers for them. They have needs that we can't meet. And it's because we are needy. And it's because we haven't tapped into who God is. Watch this here. And when, she, and, and when the queen of Sheba had seen Solomon's wisdom, the house he had built. She's talking about the body of Christ. Now she's talking about the church, but I'm talking about prophetically. The body of Christ and the churches, the that. I mean, beautiful churches. See, we we have to have somewhere where people can come and see 
And it has a spirit of excellence in it. A lot of places where people go and go to church, they go in there and it smells stale. The uh, carpet ran over. Holes in the wall. Chairs all tore up and cheap. All this is stuff here. And we expect people to want to be a part of that. No, we need to operate in a spirit of excellence. People are drawn to a spirit of excellence. They're not drawn to mess because they're already in mess. They want to know how to get up out of mess. And when they come into a church and they see it's nasty, dirty, and stinky, they don't want to come up in there. Church been up for 20 years, been a building fund for 20 years, ain't changed a doorknob on the church. Okay. The foot of his table, the seating of his officials, the standing at attention of his servants, their apparel, his cup bearers also, and their apparel, and his burnt offerings which he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. Lord have mercy, Jesus. See, when she came and she saw the food at his table, the food of his table, she saw the she saw the abundance of no lack. Jesus, man. Versus coming to see the church struggling, folks begging, folks trying to get money from her. But she see the table dining with the best food. See, because God doesn't do nothing half-hearted. And we in the church, we, you know, we selling chicken dinners, fish dinners, soul food plates and candy and all this here old mess here. Just to make a mockery out of the church. Just to make the church a supermarket. Hey, hey, Rick, bless you, Psalmist. Bless you. And we didn't just made the church a whole supermarket. But when the Queen of Sheba saw the food of his table, she saw, she saw lavishness, abundance. This is what's going to draw people. See, it is going to take finances. To draw people to the kingdom of, of God. See, and God and Satan both know that it's going to take finances to draw people to any of their kingdoms. This is why Satan flows in finances. And the body of Christ struggle in finances. This is why we got to get a new system on how we pursue finances. Because the way we've been going about it now is not working. As you can see, because everybody is struggling mainly except for the pastor. This is why we got a different, we, we got to get it, we have to get a different system so this here can play. Watch this here. And the, uh, and the seating of his officials, order, 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 the standing of attention of his servants. You're talking about order. She saw the order that was in there. The order. See, we got too much disorder going on now. Folks doing anything they want to do in the church. Pastors doing anything. Deacons doing anything. Prophets, prophets charging folks to get prophecy. Pastors doing all kind of stuff. Everybody doing what they want to do. Nobody got order. I mean, nobody got order. Even, even uh, many apostles. And these are the ones that will be set in order. Nobody got order. It's just a cluster mess. And we expect folks to be drawn to this. No, no, folks are supposed to come in the house of God and see an abundance and see excellence and see order. Because they are already in lack, confusion, disorder, and mess, nastiness. They trying to see how to get up out of that. This is why God wants to use us as his pipelines to reveal his goodness to people. But if we haven't experienced his, 
his goodness in our own life, how can we reveal something to other people? How can we keep doing this here? Okay, Psalms. So how can we keep on doing this here? Now check this out. And the attention of his servants, their apparel, how they was looking, dressed nice, neat, formidable. I mean, we go to church all kind of ways. I mean, we look all kind of ways. Matter of fact, many of us dress just like the world in church. And say we're trying to keep up with the new trend to draw people. You, we want to come with a spirit of excellence. Now, I'm not saying you have to wear a tie and all this stuff all the time. I barely wear ties myself. So, so. And I'm not against people wearing that. But you do have to have some neatness about yourself. You do have to have some conformity about yourself. Have some order. And his burnt offerings, which he offered at the house of the Lord. We come to church... And we offer anything. And watch this here. I'm not speaking on the amount. I'm speaking on the attention. Our motives. On what we offer. In the house of the Lord. See because you can bring a whole bunch of money. To the church. And your motives are off. You remember when Jesus. Stood at the door. And watching people. Put into the offering. And there were people putting some serious money in there. And and this a woman came back and she put two mites in there. Jesus said, this woman here has put in more than anybody just put in. Lord have mercy because of her hard posture. Jesus. Watch this. And when she saw all that, this is what the Bible said. There was no more spirit in her. This woman saw that when she came to the house of the Lord, any question she had about life was answered. She was more than satisfied with the answers that she got. She saw the extravagance of the church. She saw the abundance at the table. She saw the order and the apparel and the conformity that people had. She saw the cupbearer. The cupbearer was the one who used to taste the uh, king's drink before he got it. So it wasn't no poison or nothing get in. See, we don't have people, you know, to, to uh, be attentive. Because now we have so much compromising in the word where folks just receive anything and let all that poison get into the church. And it feeding people all this ill poison in the church and folks leave out affected with poison and they spew it out into the world. But she saw order. She saw safety. She saw the way that the abundance of the church and every question she had was answered. The Bible said that that lady's spirit left her. She, she couldn't hardly stand it. This is how the world is supposed to approach the church. They are supposed to come into a church and just fall on their face and repent and give their life to Jesus. Watch what this woman said. She said, and I'm in verse 5, she said to the king, the report which I heard in my own land of your acts and sayings of your wisdom was true. But I did not believe their words until I came and my eyes had seen it. Behold, the half of the greatness of your wisdom was not told me. You surpassed the fame that I heard of you. She said that I heard about what y'all doing up in here. But I didn't believe it. But but now when I came here. 
man, when I came and saw what y'all were working with, you answered everything I had to ask you and saw how y'all getting down. Look, this was past my imagination. I've never seen nothing like this. I know y'all got to know God. This is how the world supposed to be coming to the church. I know y'all know God. I want to know who you know. Watch this here. Happy are your wives and men, and happy are, are these your servants who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. He's saying, happy are the men and women that come in here to serve him. Everybody, everybody are in good spirits because they're standing and they're getting serious wisdom that is changing their lives. Jesus. They shouldn't be coming to church and see that the people in there are depressed, downtrodden, struggling, broke, filthy, angry, just jacked up. And we want them to come to that. Now we got to grow up. She said, I saw everybody in here happy. Lives, are, lives have been taken to a whole nother level. Jesus. Watch, this is what makes folks fall on their face and repent. And say, I want to know that God who you know. Because it's working for you. See, we can't present something to people and try to convince them that it'll work for them when they don't see it working in our lives. That won't happen. That won't happen. Blessed be the Lord your God who delighted in you and set you on his throne to be king for the Lord your God. Mm -mm -mm. She giving him honor. She giving God honor because of the goodness that she's, she, she see that God has put in the life of the body of Christ. See, the Bible said that it's the goodness of God that brings folk to repentance. This woman saw the goodness of God. Watch this. Because your God loved Israel, the church, the church, the church, the church, and would establish them forever. He made you king over them to do justice and righteousness. This is a particular, this is a prophetic move of Jesus and the church. Man, 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 we got to get this. See, God needs us as his pipelines. To reveal his goodness to the people. He can't do it no other way. This is why we got to grow up and get saved. And stop all these stunts and tactics in the church. Because we can't draw people with the way we're doing it now. We got to get saved. For real. And get to know God and his goodness. And get to know God and his awesomeness. In his loving kindness, in his lavishness, in his abundance. Man, man, man. Now watch this. Watch what she did. This is what the world supposed to be doing. She gave the king 120 talents of gold, a very large quantity of spices and precious stones. Such spice was not anywhere as that which the queen of Sheba gave King Solomon. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Lord have mercy, Jesus. The, the world is supposed to be bringing finances to the church like crazy. Here, here, I see what y'all are doing. I want to sow seed into that. You got kings, heathen kings that were bringing Solomon all kind of money. All kind of, they was helping make the uh, temples and everything. They were bringing all kind of stuff. This is 
a prophetic move of how the world is supposed to see the church and how the world is supposed to conform to the church and how the world is supposed to come and actually be a financial institute for the church. Why would he say the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous? When he brought Israel out of Egypt, what did he do? The Egyptians gave them all that stuff. It's in the Bible. We got to grow up and get saved for real so that the world can see us and be just out of their spirit, be in awe of the way they see us and say, for surely I want to get to know that God that, that, that you all know. Because I see the lifestyle that you all are living it has to be God. I want to know him. What must I do to be saved? The world needs to get a woman at the well experience and say, come see a man. Hey. <laughs> the world needs to get a road to Damascus experience. So they can be blinded and, and when the scales fall off their eyes, they'll see clearly. That is God all by himself that did these marvelous things. This your boyhood, pastor of the heart of God ministry. Just giving you something on a little nugget that we need to grow in as far as the way the world should see the body of Christ. And I'm out. Peace.